Okay. Yeah, uh, let's put start in the ah, yeah. Yeah. No, no. yeah, this is the chapter 13 comparing two means. The objective of objectives of the chapter are um well comparing two means through different um, types of statistics. Um the thing about this is that um that that sometimes we have situations where we want to see if there is differences between two groups like for example uh, in the chapter say that knowing whether or not anxiety levels differ between parents and non-parents or if a new drug affects blood pressure or not and these types of questions uh, often involves comparing the average values of things like anxiety levels or blood pressure levels in the different groups. Um, the most common or the most appropriate method, statistical method for doing these types of comparisons is the t-test, which has different types depending on the exact questions we're trying to answer. Um, the chapters cover the sample t-test, independent sample t-test, and pair, pair uh, sample t-test. And well, others are related topics. But before um, going directly to the t-test, the chapter introduces a discussion about the c-test. Uh, and yeah, initially it says that the one sample C test is rarely, rarely used in real life situations because it seems to be as uh, it's, it's rarely used because the type of assumptions it involves, um, which we are going to see later, but uh, usually is. Uh, we, we used to see this in the classes because it's a powerful tool that could lead us to the t-test. Uh, now, the, the chapter proposed to, to look into the c-test, the chapter proposed an example um, about Dr. Sepo's statistic class, where the average grade is 67.5 with a standard deviation of 9.5. Um, and Dr. Sepo is wondering if their 20 psychology students have better grades than the average or lower, or they have the same. Uh, grades as the, the average value. So we have here our data with the mean grades being seven to 72.3. And we can see that the psychology student seems to perform slightly better than the average. But the question here, is that other problem here is that we have an n or a number of 20, which is not that big. So um, it is possible that we are having this high value or higher value just by chance. So the purpose of this uh, test is, um, Knowing, knowing, you know, knowing if this is just by chance or not, or knowing if the of this, um, where is yeah. Knowing where is the mean, the psychology population 
mean value, not just the sample um, value, which can be biased because of the number of subjects, but um, where is the number in the populations? So for this, we have the, uh, we, we start with the data we know, which is that the psychology student sample mean is uh, 72.3. And we here assume that the standard deviation is the same of the rest of the class, which is 9.5. And the grades follow a normal distribution due to the grading curve. <clears throat> um, now we establish what we want to learn from the data, which is um, the research hypothesis to the research hypothesis relates to the population mean for the psychology student grade, which is unknown. Specifically, I want to know if uh, mu is equal to 67.5 or not. So, um, yeah, the goal is to test if the mean grade of psychology students is equal to 67.5 or not. Uh, <clears throat> initially, this required hypothesis test, considering the data we have and the distribution they come from. And um, yeah, this figure is showing the theoretical distribution um, from which the psychology student grades are supposed to have been generated. Now for constructing the, I mean, as it says, the constructing, the first step is constructing the hypothesis test. The uh, goal is compare the sample mean with a population mean predicted by a null hypothesis. So the question is whether the sample mean is significantly different from what the null hypothesis claim. So for this, we establish our two hypotheses, the null and the alternative. And the null hypothesis states that the true population means for psychology student grades is 67.5. And the alternative hypothesis counters this. And he, here we have a graphical visualization of both hypotheses. And um, yeah, the next uh, thing to do is choose a statistic for comparison. In this case, the sample mean is used. The test statistics is calculated by considering how far the sample mean is from the population mean predict by the null hypothesis, standardized by the standard error mean. So in here, well, here it says that the uh, key thing of this analysis is standardizing the difference between the sample mean and the null hypothesis because, um, yeah, and this standardized scores follows a standard normal distribution. And um, yeah, it says that it is uh, going to give us um, like a more general idea in which uh, part of the distribution we are rather than just a value what we cannot di directly uh, interpret it. So uh, in, that, in that sense, a larger C value suggests that the sample mean is significantly differently from what the null hypothesis predict. And the magnitude of C helps decide whether or not we reject the null hypothesis. And yeah, 
As some figures here, 13.3 provides visual representation of critical regions for different significance level. Um, if the calculated C falls into the regions, the new null hypothesis is rejected. Here I can show this. Where is here it is? Yeah. Here we have uh, an, some graphs of the critical regions for the C uh, test. As the text say, says, when our C score is or within these uh, regions, our null hypothesis is rejected. I'm oh, sorry. Um, right, yeah, it says that in the past, the researchers relied on critical values from tables to perform te this test manually. Um, however, now using software is possible to to uh, make this test and. and without a need of these tables. And um, yeah, one general conclusion for this will be that the one sample C test is a method to assess whether a sample mean is significantly different from a predicted population mean. Um, it involves setting up the hypothesis, calculated a standardized test statistics, and comparing it to critical values for um, make a decision. The standardized C score helps in making conclusions without needing a specific mathematical formulas. And now the chapters uh, explain how to how we can perform a C one sample C test in air step step by step. The uh, first step would be prepare the data. Yeah, given that the grades data and the assuming population. Uh, yeah, given the grades and the data that and the assumed population parameters, which are the population mean and the standard deviation. The first step is compute the sample mean and the uh, true standard error of the mean and define the null hypothesis values. So for doing this, we have this uh, example code where we have the here the sample mean. Now we define the value of the population mean accordingly to what the null hypothesis specifies. And we establish the known population standard deviation. And additionally, we compute the sample size. And uh, having these uh, values or these uh, objects, we calculate the true standard error of the mean um, using this formula. And we calculate the C scores uh, using the um, following formula, which is the sample mean uh, subtracting the the population mean and dividing between the uh, true standard error of the mean. And yeah, we have the C scores. And yeah, it is possible looking at the, at a, in a table, the critical values for this C test, as we said previously. Um, 
but the calculated C score is compared to critical values corresponding to the chosen significance levels to determine the significance. I mean, yeah, depending on the significant level we are using is the, uh, we can define, determine the significance. It says that, for instance, a C-score of 2.26 will be significant at, um, at a significant level of 0 0.05, but not at a 0 0.01 level. Um, but it also says that um, optionally we could compute the p-value to know the exact significance level associated with the calculated C scores. Um, yeah. Yeah, and for this, the we are going to use the function pnorm. Uh, for a two-tailed test, the areas under both tails beyond the absolute value of the C scores are calculated and added together to obtain the p-value. The upper area, C scores to infinity and lower area are calculated separately and the sum give us the p-value. In this case, uh, we have, for example, we have, we are going to use the p norm function and as input we use our c score and that gave us the upper area and we use the same function but with uh, with the negative c score to obtain the lower r area and we sh you we should uh, adopt these two values for having the p-value. Um, particularly in this case, this is 0 0.024, um, saying that the probability of obtaining a result as extreme as the observed one. And this uh, leads us to reject the, sorry, to accept the null hypothesis. So, yeah, um, it says that calculated the p value is more precise than relying sol solely on the critical values from the tables. And this, the one sample C test have we imply some um, important assumptions. The first one is normality. It assumes that the true population distribution is normal. This assumption is often reasonable and can be checked using methods detailed in section 13.5. Um, the second assumption is the independence. The test assumes that observation in the data set are not correlated in any partic particular way. Um, it says that sometimes confirm or reject this assumption could be hard and relies on having a good experimental design. And uh, yeah, but possibly the most uh, relevant assumption is that the test involves knowing the standard deviation because the test assumes that the true standard deviation of the population is known by the researcher. Uh, but this is practically unrealistic because in real world scenarios, knowing the uh, population standard deviation um, I mean, is um, not frequently or cannot be seen very often. And knowing yeah. 
And this assumption is practically unrealistic because in real world scenarios, knowing the standard deviation of the population will be completely unaware of the population mean is impossible. Oh, yeah, let me say. And it says that this third assumption is problematic and unrealistic. Um, yeah. And that makes the test a little bit useless in real life. And for this reason, we have to move into the t-test, which doesn't demand knowledge of the population standard deviation. And the t-test often consider, is considered uh, the more practical and versatile. And um, yeah. The, the, basically, this is the main reason why um, the t-test is more commonly used. Um, yeah, it's all about the C one a sample c-test for the moment. For for the next session, I will be presenting the uh, t-test, but. Yes, yeah, it's all I have so far. Uh, any thoughts or something to say? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the, the, um, I found this very illuminating, uh, at, at least very clear. Um, the uh, Especially the part where you, where the, no, just just uh, can you share your screen again, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, Let's share. The, the part where it says uh, the upper um, size of the uh, and the lower uh, side. Yeah. So basically, uh, we we use this test when we've got just few values, so like 20 is the minimum, so 20 and less, so you you use the Z test, uh, while if they are more, you can use the T test. So the, the Z test is basically this, um, um, it's a table of values that contains the probabilities uh, uh, of mm, some events happening, uh, um, behaving normally. Okay, so the density, uh, the probability density as a, a bell curve. And so Z is a standardized um, uh, value the, that you can uh, retrieve from these tables. Uh, by plugging, by searching for the probability uh, value, and then you retrieve the Z, the Z value. And the, what, what's happened there is basically very clear because uh, sometimes it's tricky to understand when you need to put the lower tail or both sides or the upper tail want to use just the z as a positive z score in this case as a positive value instead of negative so here um it shows uh, very clearly that you can uh, uh, calculate the upper area uh, by plugging into the p norm function the z z score and lower tail falls while the lower area is p norm, uh, so the uh, negative uh, with a negative z score. So the same z score, once positive, once negative. And so you, you, we, we obtain the same value. And then the sum of these two values is the, the p value. So this is, uh, I, I found this part very, so very well said uh, and clear. So that just to, um, to keep in mind 
that you can verify um, the two sides of the p-values. Okay, so because it's uh, so somehow uh, and sometimes it can be uh, tricky uh, when because the, there's a, this this um, differentiation between uh, um, two-sided test or one-sided test. Okay, so when we compare, so when we search to when when we want to um, um, reject the new hypothesis, so we want to destruct the the, the uh, com compute a, dis a destruction uh, of the um, H zero of the new hypothesis. So we impose uh, that the new hypothesis H zero is equal to some values, for example, as in these cases. Uh, and then we want to negate, so like uh, prove it's wrong, prove it that it's wrong. Uh, and so we do that, um, assigning an alternative hypothesis it has to be different from, from this uh, mean value that we assign. Uh, and so this is a two-sided analysis. Is that mm -hmm. true? Because you search for a specific value, and so when it's different, it's uh, everything that is uh, is not that value. So everything that is around that value. And so this is a two-sided, and so we search for an upper area, a lower area, and the sum of the two is the p-value. The definition of the p-value is... Um, um so we search for something that is a little bit more e extreme assuming the new um um so the definition of the p value is it's basically the, the um the chance to um find a value which is more extreme than the one that we want to prove it wrong, basically. <laughs> but so th this is, uh, is there a um, very uh, well-specified definition? No. Let's see here the word there. It is. This is the input. The standard error. Um. Yeah. Here is this part. Okay. So that is two sided. So looking at it a bit and. Um, Uh, and so that no, there is no definition. I don't see it. I don't see that a clear, a clear p value. But but basically, it shows very clearly that the sum of the two areas uh, identify the amount of the p value that we are uh, searching for, and this will disprove our new hypothesis. So in this case. Um, it, it, it's, in our example, in our example, for example, no. So in our example, we have uh, uh, a p value of uh, zero point zero two. So usually has to be less than 0 0.05 to reject the new hypothesis. So in this case, we reject the new hypothesis. In fact, we know that we have obtained a value which is different from the mean, the real mean value, so the population mean value. Because the population mean value is 60 and something, but the mean that we found is 70. 
so it is greater, definitely different from, from the population mean. And so we found a p-value which is lower than 0 0.05. Oh, our so we, significance level, you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we can uh, we reject the new hypothesis. It's definitely different from from the the the, the value that we specified. The uh, the the, the popu uh, Oh, sorry. Maybe I said something wrong. So the population mean. It's going to be different from the one that we have imposed mm. as to be in our new hypothesis. And so the p-value we... is the sum of the area, yeah? Sorry. I mean, the p-value is smaller, right? Like the 0 0.05. In our example, yeah. So we impose that. It, so general, it, it should be to be significant. It mm -hmm. Should be a p value lower than no point no five. Right. Five yep. percent. Five percent, basically. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes, we have absolutely. a few, uh, uh, probability density, um, um, which is hundred percent. So if we found a p-value uh, which is lower than 5%, that means that we can reject the hypothesis, the new hypothesis, because, because it's, it's, it's very extreme. We, we found a region that can, where the, the, the things can happen, which is very extreme, so it's very unlikely. Right. To be true. So we reject the new hypothesis. That can we can make errors. Right. Scaling and everything. If we go forward and if we do because we have just a very little, very, very little data set, very few data. So if you go forward, like we make simulation, replication, and everything, we might find a different result, and then we make an error. We have so we realize that we make an error. We can make a type one error, type two error, and so on. But basically, right. what I, I yeah, I, what but, I really like is, is this part, so that when you identify the upper area with a positive Cisco, and then the lower area with a negative z-score, and then the sum of the two is your p-value. And it, it's going to prove that is that. Can you, uh, this is not your, okay. If, uh, another thing that I really like it, now can you scroll a bit down? Yeah, about here, where it says true, um standard error and then the standard error like a bit up, um up um uh, bit more yeah here so like we have um uh the uh standard error of the mean which is the true value and this is calculated with the standard uh, deviation, the true standard deviation, so the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of the um, the, the number of ob observations. And then the, the, what is it? The other one is the z-score, and so we do the sample mean minus the the mu divided by the standard. The, yeah. This this is the value that we impose to to 
to disprove. So we want to disprove the, that 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 condition. We want to prove it's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this Z score is basically the standardized value. This is the standardization, no? You know, the mean, the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. In this case, we use the standard error and the sample mean. Mm -hmm. This is because our observations are very few. And so we use this Z score. Then when, when we do the T test, uh, I think it's going to be, we, we can compare the two. Right. We can compare the, the two formulas, both says test, you mean? I'm, I'm, I, yeah, uh, I mean, um, I'll, here you can see clearly how to calculate the Z score. Mm -hmm. And I believe the same happened for the T test. I guess so. Yeah, so possibly. Not... Um, no. Let's have a, a quick look. Uh, if you can see, yeah, exactly. A bit uh, okay here. You see that this is the the t value. In in this case, you have a a, a sample which is larger. And so you use this uh, um, sigma half divided by the square root of n, which is uh, the different from from the z test where you use the the standard error. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Where it should be here is the formula. Yes, here the standard the, the standard error true is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. The same the, just the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here, here I think here we have the formula. Yes. No, it's there. There is a function that they use one sample t test. There is no step-by-step uh, -step R code for to see the. But let, let's see for the ne next uh, session. But initially, it says that here we have an estimate of the standard deviation. Uh-huh, yeah. Not, it's the, an estimate. Uh -huh. not the true standard deviation or the known standard, just an estimation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's exactly that. The only thing that just uh, below the, the, the formula, the only thing that has changed is that instead uh -huh. of using, uh, yeah, the no true value sigma, we use uh, the estimate. So a sigma hat. So this is the basically the difference from, from the Z test. Mm -hmm. Um here with the sample mean. Yeah. Yeah, the sample mean is the sample mean. Mm-hmm. 
sample mean is not a population mean. The population mean is the one that we want to find. Yeah. yeah. What we establish in the null hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And the true standard deviation, the real standard deviation, divided by the square root of the number. Number of observations. Yeah. Yeah, because then then you can say so this is my population. Okay, mm -hmm. but effectively it is not because you potentially want to build the model, and and uh, find that using these tests, the result is always the same because it is true. And so this is, yes, your sample mean, it's all you got, but in case in the universe, so when you have a different data, but the, on the same topic, the same purpose, the same thing, you should find the same result. So that's the population mm -hmm. mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In case you have uh, uh, other data, other observations, they should release you the same result. New data. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is the population. In By general. The, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, possibly the most interesting part is this one, like summing the upper area and the lower area to obtain the p-value. Yeah. Because I, I found these areas very tiny. So like one percent, it's one point twenty percent on the upper area and one point twenty percent on the lower area. But I mean graphically that will be uh for example. Graphically, that value will be here, right? Like, I mean, in our example, the those values will be. In our example, this this value here are these two values, because these are on the x-axis, but they are not like. 1.96%. Okay. This is um uh, the the axis uh, the the, the x-axis value and are the values that you find on the tables when you search for a z value. Okay. So mm -hmm. you basically uh while instead inside the curve a little area, this this uh, two little corners of this, this area, these purple things, uh, stripy areas, can be uh, like 2.5% of the total area. Both of them are 5%. So basically, the area under the curve, the, the, it's 100%. Mm -hmm. The area under the curve, it's 100%. What you find in the tails, you assign it to be, because you prove it, that it would be about 2.5% each on each tail, that bit there. So that is an area. 
identified by a percentage of the probability that you can find a value that will fall inside that, that area. Yeah. And that area starts at 1.96 on the x-axis on, on one side and minus on, on the other side. So these are, I mean, these are the values that we search on the tables to find mm -hmm. uh, the percentage of the area. Even here we have the table. Yeah. And so no point five, no point no five five percent is one point ninety five for two sided. So I have mm -hmm. two sides. Ninety-five, about ninety-six, so around mm -hmm. ninety-six. Well, one-sided is they are all on a side. So it's the case when you search for a value which is greater, greater or equal than or less or equal than. Yep. Not you are not pointing to a specific a specific value, and then you look for the alternative, which is all the other around. One point sixty four sixty five. Two sided. In our case, we plug no point no uh one inside right yeah the z score our z score is is 2.25 and so we do 2.25 minus 2.25 mm -hmm. It's a bit tricky some, some, somehow because you use the the tables, you search for the number and that it releases um, value. So, but what's happening is a, a standardization. So you take the values. Um, Because you know, so the sample mean minus the mu null. So you you take the values and then you divide it yep. by, yeah. So that that's your z score. I have a. Yes. Give me give me a what? second. I have this thing that you can, uh, this is very old. Right. You can find it there. So you search for the value. You find it on the internet as well, no? These tables. And then you search for the value there. We don't use these things anymore.
I think in the secondary school I learned <laughs> with the I don't I don't even find it. It should be here. This is very old. Nineteen ninety-one. Where is it? Wow. Well, <laughs> Oh, compendio statistico. Ah, yeah. I, I have this blur thing on my... Where is it? The, here is the 2.26. Two, two Put aside it, I'm looking. It's bigger than the critical value of 1.96 that will be required to be significant at alpha 0 0.05, but it's smaller than the value 2.58 that will be requ required to be significant at level 0.01. I should have a table in, on my computer as well. That is second easier to. Did the Z, Z, Z table you find it? This one here, for example. So I'm 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 having a look at the at the table. So I search for minus two point five. That that was two point five. That was two point five. Two point two five. Two point two five. Yeah, two point two five. Two point two, 2. and then you search for five. I show you. I share my screen. Right. I can Where is it? Okay. Can you see it? Yep. No, okay. I just grabbed one of these uh, the, the things because so what you, when you search for something that less and equal than that, this it, it's one sided test. While you, when you search for a specify a specific value, so we we search for minus two point two, and then five. So I I search for five here, and then I have this no point no one two two, which is uh, rounded because we have one one nine or something. You know? Mm -hmm. So this is one, and then the other is going to 2.2, and then 5. And this is different. Should be here. It's uh, 98.78, which is different. <laughs> In fact, that sounded <laughs> a bit stranger. It was uh, just as the same. Okay, because this one here looks for, it's one-sided. So search for the area less or equal than that value. While this is two-sided. So... Where is it? So in this case, we cannot look at at the table like this. We need to mm -hmm. do one minus, so this value here, we need to do one minus this value to find the other the other bit. So that was a bit tricky. So we don't we don't yeah. we don't have this <laughs> issues anymore.
yeah, possibly now the most, uh, yeah, I think is the way to do it now, right? Like assuming the operation, or do you know any other way to know the uh, significance or beyond? Because here it's only mentioned like two ways, the like the um using the tables or in R this function P norm for obtaining the upper and lower area and with that obtaining the P value. But I think we have only those two, right? Like I, I miss you. <laughs> Are you mute? You're mute. So basically, yeah. yeah. So basically, this one is uh, because I can see clearly with the. Uh, but this this one, for example, should be colored around a value because this is looks like another value on a side which is different from this other one but can be on even on the other side and I said that is that that now I'm not I'm not uh, um I'm curious to see uh what's what's next basically. It's an independent sample test based one sided test. These are one sided tests. Should be the one less and greater than this one. Okay. Yeah, okay, so there's a um, uh, few more things to to see and then we'll look at, mm -hmm. like, we apply the t-test on, uh, on our sample data. Yeah, we'll try to condense more the next uh, topics for finishing this chapter next session. Because if not, we are never going to uh, see the most exciting uh, chapter which the Bayes Bayesian statistics introduction to Bayesian yeah. statistics <laughs> but yeah. then if you go, if you summarize the things you, you don't stop to to the things that are uh worth for a discussion somehow yeah okay thank you yeah yeah, yeah thank you for joining her, uh, for resuming this uh, this book club. <laughs> <laughs>